Hey guys, James from Sicky Manufacturing. On this episode, we're going to dive into the design of the motor mount kit that we're putting in this 69 GTO. And we're going to show you some behind the scenes of how we scan in an engine compartment and the tunnel and all the factory mount locations and holes and then design our mount system in CAD. So, a lot different from the way things have always been done in the past where you know, most mount kit manufacturers out there are going to start with a handmade setup. The problem with that is there's a lot of things that can change from start to finish on that. Once we develop the location's precise fitment of the factory holes and cross members and subframes and stuff like that, we design everything and build it all in 3D in CAD and that allows us to make sure there's absolutely perfect fitment on every component we include in a swap kit. So things like headers and you know the headaches of buying a header from a kit manufacturer that doesn't fit, tubes hit the frame rails or whatever it be. That's one thing you don't have to worry about with Siki Manufacturing Kits because of the level of detail and the amount of technology we put behind every design that we make. So looking forward to showing you guys this. Uh, stay tuned this episode. We're going to knock out a whole bunch of the design work and put together some prototypes hopefully and start test fitting some of that by the end of the episode. So stay tuned. Let's check it out. All right. So before we move on to scanning, we do have an update from last episode. We've got the wheels and tires in that we're going to be running on this car. So. We're going to get the tires mounted on these wheels and get the wheels hung up on the car here and then move on to the next steps for this episode which is going to be scanning this puppy and getting that all done. Alright guys, awesome stuff's happening on the GTO today. We're getting all the scans done. So this will give us a 3D image of the engine compartment and all the key locations for the motor mount holes in the subframe, in the front subframe as well as the holes along the frame rails on the back side so we can get this transmission cross member design and all bolted up so pretty awesome can't wait to get to this step so once we get all this stuff scanned in then we're going to move to the computer and actually start doing the design work and um, coming up with the ways we're going to tackle some of these challenges with the design as far as overcoming some of the clearance issues and just getting this motor in the absolute perfect location and perfectly aligned so let's check it out all right so there's several challenges to the design of this mount kit that you know initially just looking at this scan data that we're going to have to overcome, uh, the trans cross member itself is going to be massive. I mean, it's probably roughly five feet. It's going to span from this frame rail right here all the way over to this frame rail. So we're going to make it as lightweight as possible, but it's also got to be extremely rigid and strong. So the design we come up with that needs to take into account for the huge span we're going to have to cover to support that transmission. Um, some of the other challenges are going to be fitting this engine in there as far back as we can. Uh, we have to take into account customers that want to run air conditioning, so that is the only limitation for how far back we can push it. We could go further back and get it way up into the firewall here, but then we're also going to run into some challenges with the shifter and where that's going to come out. So we don't want to put it so far back that that creates a problem too. But finding that happy medium is going to be important. Um, but first step is we got to load our engine in and get that aligned perfectly in this engine compartment using all the different data points that we scanned in. So this, what you're looking at here is primarily just the mesh of the whole body. It's not as crucial. This is more for clearance, but we also probed all the holes that are important here and have exact hole locations, which you can't currently see them easily, but they're in this drawing too. So we can add in uh, the engine element now and get that aligned. All right, so now you can see we got the LS3 loaded in. Um, we have all the different transmissions in CAD, so we can go through and check fitment on them. This is, happens to be a T56, so you can see we've got it in here with starter on it. You can see the bottom of the block. Um, this will allow us to design, incorporate the oil pan in here and what sump style we're going to use. So you can see how the front cross member um, comes right underneath the oil pan here so a really low profile oil pan like we make is going to be essential to get this in here with the motor as low as possible um, again the whole point in our mount kit design is to put it put the engine as far back as humanly possible and also as low as we can just to keep that center of gravity down um, some of the limitations we're going to run into are definitely going to be the front subframe and the AC compressor. We've got to make sure that AC compressor will still fit. Uh, this particular drive setup you can see 
for somebody who wants to keep the stock steering rack, they're gonna have to run a high mount setup for the alternator because the alternator is all up in the steering box. But this particular build, we're running an aftermarket steering rack, so this doesn't even matter. But um, you know, trying to take all that into consideration while putting the engine in the perfect spot. We don't want to make an exception for engine location just because of this one drive option where it seems like a lot of the mount kit manufacturers out there will kind of like always shooting for a one size fits all, which, you know, at some point you're gonna have to sacrifice something that's more important than just running a different front drive. So in our case, you know, we want, what we're going for is the absolute perfect engine placement, um, taking all that into consideration. Uh, you can see the, the way the GTO is, it's got this big removable panel in here from the factory that kind of gives you a huge window to work with. So um, it's pictured here the way it was scanned with that panel removed, which just basically screws down to the floor. But you can see the T56 comes up in a pretty good spot. All right, so here you can see we designed an oil pan that has the sump in the right spot and also the extremely low clearance on the front side here. You can see it needs to be real thin in the front to clear this subframe to get the engine as low as possible in this car. Um, and then the sump itself fits right in this hole right behind it. So works out great for fitment and we're pretty much right where we want to be with clearance where we're not hitting anywhere in here, but it's as close as possible. So. At this point, we've got the motor placed in the optimum position front to back. It's aligned absolutely perfect in the chassis with the, the height that we want. And then even taking into consideration firewall clearance and all that stuff. So we got plenty of room back there. Like I said, we could, if it wasn't for air conditioning and the different transmissions not fitting, we could go a little further back. but. At this point, we're as far back as you can go without sacrificing something major like having the transmission and the shifter just too far back or losing the ability to run air conditioning and stuff like that. So this is kind of the happy medium and a huge improvement over the existing kits that are out there as far as like engine location and position. So this in itself will make a big difference in the overall weight distribution in, in this car and the center of gravity. So. Um, next step is we need to design the motor mounts and transmission bracket. All right, so here you can see this is a prototype pan we were just looking at in CAD, pre-production model, but this is essentially the exact same thing we just came up with. So um, you can see it's got this side port style oil filter block. So this basically is what we hook our oil filter relocation lines up to and then you can locate the filter wherever you want on your chassis. Just it's real tight back in here anyway so this makes it nice and easy to get the oil lines in and out and we CNC machine this block in house here along with this is the like I mentioned a half inch flange. One of the key things with our oil pans is they start out at a half inch they get completely welded up and then we put this thing back in the CNC machine and come back over it and mill it absolutely glass smooth, perfectly flat. And that just ensures that the gaskets don't leak and you don't have issues with the pan. So pretty cool aspect of our pans and not to mention the baffle trap doors in here. So as the oil's sloshing around, this door will shut, keeps it from going out into this wing of the pan out here and vice versa, you should go around a corner the other way and all the oil wants to slosh this way. This trap door shuts, keeps that oil around the pickup tube, just gives you a lot longer time frame before you start to suck any kind of air on like a long sweeping turn. So um, just a little extra insurance and a major improvement over the, the factory GM oil pans that are out there. So it's, it's gonna give you a little bit of extra performance for that track car the time you're sending it around a long sweeping turn. So this fits over top of the front subframe and keeps it that real tight profile. You can see we also have a machine back plate. It's half inch thick as well. <clears throat> so this keeps it super rigid, solid pan. 
and it also incorporates dust cover nuts so you can use your factory dust shields and it comes with a magnetic drain plug. All right, so after considering the design and the engine placement, this is the engine mount that we came up with. So this is built aluminum. It's going to be CNC machined out of 6061. Uh, these are our urethane formula for our engine mount bushings. So it's a uh, half inch diameter hole steel sleeve through the middle here with a high performance polyurethane bushing and then this CNC machined mount bracket. So all this goes together in assembly and bolts to the side of the engine block. So it's extremely strong, uh, fully captured. So this bolt goes through here. It's completely isolated. There's no metal on metal contact. So it'll be excellent for absorbing vibrations, uh, making sure that you know you can enjoy your car and not get rattled to pieces while you're driving it around, uh, but still maintain a pretty tight control on the movement of the engine under high torque and extreme power situations. So this will take the abuse and keep the engine still but absorb enough vibration to make it a comfortable ride. All right, so CNC machines are all tied up right now doing production runs on other parts. So in order to get this thing test fitted in a timely manner and you know check out all the other parts we've already been able to make, we're going to 3D print the motor mounts and the bushings are actually gonna be 3D printed into the mount, so it's all gonna be one piece, but we're gonna get this 3D printer right here up and running here in a sec and get a couple mounts made so we can go test fit this thing on the car when we're done the rest of the stuff. So like I said before, the scan gives us kind of like the skin and clearances and stuff like that, but we also probed extremely accurately the actual existing holes in the subframe and laid them all out so that way we have exactly where we need to design our brackets and bolts and all that to attach to the factory GTO chassis. So this, you can see aligns this bushing. So our steel bracket's gonna have to bridge this gap and tie this together here using these factory holes. Just to, again, make this like a simple bolt-in, no fabrication swap. I mean, that's kind of the goal with all of our Siki mount kit solutions is it's, it's a trouble-free, fab free design whenever possible and something you can easily bolt in in your backyard without cussing and throwing all your wrenches in the backyard so um, simple and headache free is our goal and now we're to the stage where we have to design the actual sheet metal bracket to make that connection all right so this is a sheet metal bracket we ended up coming up with to like i said tie that urethane motor mount bushing it's going to go right here with the big half inch through bolt uh, and then these three bolt holes line up with the existing holes that are in the front subframe on the GTO. So this will obviously get welded up, powder coated, and uh, go into this full assembly. So you can see the, the way it looks once these are all bolted up. So All right, so you can see the final design of the trans cross member. Like I said, it's extremely long. So coming up with a way to span that huge distance and maintain rigidity and strength was a challenge, but we came up with a design that's absolutely bomb proof and extremely rigid. So it's, it's gonna take a whole lot of abuse and still be fairly easy to install because of this bolt plate design that we did over here. So basically this will bolt to the car and then if you ever had to remove it, you can take these four bolts out right here and slide it over this direction and then pull it out from the frame since it sits on on top of the actual frame rail and then this will get a urethane bushing and another sleeve of the through bolt so it's fully captured and it's going to be extremely strong but also easy to in install and get in and out of the car if you have to so I'll take a look at it what it looks like in the actual chassis so now you can see it's this is supporting the t56 but it's also really high tucked up on the bottom of the car to make sure you've got maximum room to route you know exhaust in just about any location where you want so there's plenty of room for exhaust which is important you know trying to keep everything as high as possible in relation to the bottom of the car just to make for you know the guys that are running really low setups they're not going to have issues getting over speed bumps or banging into things so everything's in the right position to keep that engine and trans in perfect alignment 
and maintain the exact pinion angles that we want. All right, so now we got the uh, brand new crate motor, this LS376 525. Got to get the oil pan mounted on it, so got this pulled apart at the moment. So we're going to be taking this oil pan right here, getting that hooked up with these prototype motor mounts and trans cross member. So here's an example of the factory motor mount set up a clamshell style right next to our new design. Much nicer, a lot lighter weight. Obviously it's plastic, but even when it's aluminum. Um, also gonna be running a quick time bell housing on this, as well as this T56 Magnum transmission. All right, so here's the pan all bolted up. All right, so that's a wrap on episode three of our GTO build series. We've got a lot done this episode between designing and actually making prototypes and even getting this oil pan fitted to the motor. So next episode, we're gonna take those prototypes and those parts that we designed and developed and test fit them in the actual GTO, see how the fitment works out, make sure we checked all the boxes we wanted to with the design and everything. So can't wait to get to that step. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the bell notification so you don't miss the next episode.